we got in there and, and Colby said, you know, take him. As soon as he said that, I squeezed the trigger and, and he dropped. Previously on Sheep Shape, Patrick Scroggin trekked to Wyoming for a visit to the new Gunworks facility before heading into the backcountry for a once in a lifetime Rocky Mountain Bighorn hunt. It just seemed like that I was meant to do that hunt, meant to go through everything I went through there and uh, just to get that sheep. I wouldn't trade that sheep for any other sheep in the world. In the frozen Canadian Arctic, Chad and his friend David are making landfall in the bone-chilling negative 35 degree Fahrenheit Cambridge Bay. It is an icy and cold world below Chad and David. This far north, life is scarce. Even so, some animals manage to carve out an existence. Seals, polar bears, wolves, and muskox are among the few animals that have made a life on this desolate landscape. With the help of their outfitter, Shane Black, and the assistance of local guides, Chad and David each hope to bag a muskox on this trip. We bought Canada North Outfitting in 2010 and uh, been coming up to the Arctic ever since then. Uh, spend four months a year up here between Cambridge Bay and various communities throughout, from here to, right through to the Eastern Arctic. Chad and David are going to be expecting uh, warmer temperatures than they will have on, than we have on the island, and they're going to go across the sea ice to the mainland, traveling through the terrain, being pulled in the Kumatek, looking for muskox tracks and in places where where we know they where they where we know they are. Getting licenses, get ourselves legal here, so when we go out tomorrow, we're uh, all taken care of here. So you want just a uh, muskox and wolf tank? Yes. So this is a muskox killer tank. You need to fill that out after you harvest your muskox and bring it back to us. Use your muskox tag and your wolf tag. Okay. Easy enough, huh? Now that the Sheep Shape team have their licenses and tags, they will go to their hotel to meet with their guides. So everything is elevated and everything's built above the ground because of the permafrost. Cambridge Bay is home to roughly 1,600 permanent residents, a few of which will be guides for the muskox hunters this week. In addition to the local residents, scientists and hunters frequent the area and rely on local knowledge to explore the land. How long have you been guiding for? 30 years. 30 years? We've seen some muskox. Uh... So. <laughs> <laughs> seen a few. Just a few. Yeah, yeah we're all set with uh, with all the warm gear, so we should be good there. So we're all fit. Yeah, sounds good. Nice to meet you. Yeah, all right. Take care. Now that Chad and David have met their guides, they will take a walk through Cambridge Bay to acclimate themselves to their cold weather clothing and make sure they can withstand the sub-zero temperatures so common in this land. This walk is crucial to the success of their hunt. As they head home from their walk, they stop by the town's welcome center to learn more about the area and the people who call it home. Took a break from our little walk here. Found us a visitor center, kind of like a little museum. Big polar bear skull, pretty neat. 
Seeing artifacts from the Inuits and reading about their culture only deepens the team's respect for the hunters and outdoorsmen who call this land home. This is a pretty cool place. It has a ton of history in it about the Inuit from this area and their culture. Good place to learn a little bit about what's going on in the area that you're, you're hunting in. You don't get a lot of opportunity to do that, so it's pretty neat. With anticipation growing, the team heads back to their hotel room. Along the way, they think about the challenges the hunt will bring and about the Inuit people who have made a life in this barren land. Tomorrow, the team will set out across the frozen bay and begin their search for muskox. This segment has been brought to you by Buck Knives, Edge of a Legend. The day is just beginning in Cambridge Bay. The sheep shape team is preparing to head out on a five hour sled ride across the frozen bay to base camp. It's the morning that we're leaving for the hunt. Uh, just packing up here, getting all our loose things uh, thrown in the bag and what we're gonna take out, uh, trying to get uh, everything tidied up. We got about three to four hour ride on the sleds and then uh, we should be to our camp. If we get lucky enough, maybe we'll get out on a hunt this afternoon. The ride is long and the land is rugged. A snowmobile breakdown late in the day could spell disaster for the team and leave them with the risk of spending a night outside in the bitter cold. An early start will help the team avoid this risk and give them a shot at hunting this afternoon. Well, we just made it to the mainland. Uh, we've been riding a snowmobile for about two hours or so, but we could see muskox any, anywhere around here on the way through. So uh, the guides were kind of looking around with binoculars a bit to see if anything was around. But we got another 18 miles or so to get to our camp. So, on we go. With no musk ox in sight, the sheep shape team press on through the bitter cold, determined to make it to their cabin and begin their hunt. Get unpacked here. Be our uh, residence for the uh, next uh, few days. This is way nicer than I thought it was going to be. Not so bad. Better than I expected. While Peter and his crew unpack the sleds to set up camp, the hunters check over their rifle and bow to ensure they made it through the rough five hour Arctic sled ride. The adjuster, the, the knob, is busted off. But the, the, the torque knob that keeps it from sliding up and down is still in place, so I'm going to shoot it. I think it may still be good. Even though it was kept in a hard case, the sight of David's bow has been damaged by the bumpy ride. David gets right to work fixing it as best he can. Then the team heads outside to make sure their tools are zeroed in. After traveling thousands of miles, David is determined not to let this setback ruin his hunt. One way or another, he will find a way to use his bow. So elevation's all right. I'm okay here. It's 32 yards, so it's just off of the 30 pin. I just pulled the third one. That was just me. So I think I'm uh, gonna hunt with a broken bow and see how we do. With David's bow working, the team now works to zero in Chad's gun. Well, we're gonna fire a few rounds through the rifle to make sure that it's still on on the travel. You know, it's a good thing to do. A lot of bouncing in those sleds, so you never know what could happen, but we just set a target up at 100 yards, just check our zero. The bullet has been sent down range. Chad and his guide take the snowmobile to retrieve the target and figure out if the gun is ready for a hunt. Here's our shot. Boom, boom. Ah, well done. I think we kill muskox with those kind of shots. Right. 
This segment has been brought to you by Wild Sheep Foundation. This segment is brought to you by Gunworks, 1,000 yards out of the box. Peter is up early. He has been guiding in the Arctic for 30 years and knows a thing or two about preparing for a long day of hunting. Just to make people's ice perk up in the morning, first thing in the morning. Over a welcomed cup of coffee, David and Chad focus in on the hunt at hand. Peter is gathering ice outside. The ice is from the surrounding freshwater lakes and will be used for everything from drinking water to washing dishes. The need to melt ice for one of life's most essential elements is a reminder of just how harsh this climate can be. So were you guys as warm as we were last night? Yeah. I mean, we were down to nothing but Shorts. It was so warm in here last night. We went to bed, and then we have 20 minus 20 sleeping bags, and it's 80 degrees in here. <laughs> the outside may be cold, but the guides ensure that the cabin stays well heated, and that their guests stay well nourished. Bacon, eggs, and toast in the Arctic. What could be better? This is going to be a good way to start the day. Looks nice again today. Not too windy, so hopefully it'll be pleasant. And we uh, don't get too cold. In the extreme Arctic weather, proper equipment can be the difference between life and death. Temperatures can dip well below minus 35 degrees Fahrenheit and cutting wind can render even the best clothing useless. The muskox that are being pursued are well suited for this environment. These descendants of the Ice Age have two layers of hair, an outer shell to protect them, and an inner shell for insulation. In order to keep up with these creatures, the team spends the moments before leaving camp putting on a series of highly specialized layers to help them survive the piercing cold of the Arctic. Just getting geared up for the day. Got quite a few layers of clothes to put on here. Do it slow so you don't sweat. Get the condensation inside your clothes, especially in your feet and your boots. And get cold fast. This is just my the light down layer that I got over my fish shirt. And my next layer is gonna be my big down uh, outer layers. Just one week before the sheep-shaped team came to the area, temperatures dropped to a bone-chilling negative 75 degrees Fahrenheit. With this possibility in mind, the team is being extra cautious with their gear, making sure they are adequately dressed for whatever Mother Nature throws their way. We're out of here. We're going out for an adventure today. Wind's not blowing bad, so it should be nice. Years of experience in the far north have taught Peter to check everything over before a day on the snow. The veteran guide has a family back home and looks forward to his return to Cambridge Bay. I have a daughter, three grandchildren, one great grandchild. And I also adopted a son, he's five years old. He loves, he li he loves to be outdoor. I'll take him out one. Take the time, take the chance I get. The sleds are ready and the gear is prepared. David and Chad are eager to get out and hunt after experiencing delays. The crew loads up and heads out, hoping they will get an early lead on some muskox and make up for lost time. This segment has been brought to you by Matthews Archery. 
So I would encourage everybody to go on the Gunworks site and they have a rifle builder tool on there where you can go in and, and build your own rifle and customize it how you like it. Uh, the different options, different colors. You know, you can add the bipod, you can add the range finder, so you can buy the whole package at once. But the big thing is, is you can go on there and completely build the rifle just like you like it. Um, this just so happens to be the one that I like. It's kind of their Mountain X version. Uh, it's a Magnus stock, a fluted barrel in, uh, in the 7LRM, which is the Gunworks cartridge. Gunworks, 1,000 yards out of the box. It is the first day of hunting, and the crew is heading across the frozen tundra in search of muskox. The sheep-shaped team stops frequently to scan the landscape, hoping to spot a herd. There seems to be no sign of muskox. It could be right over the hill, though. You never know. Yeah. You're pawing at the, the grass in there, huh? Yeah. Tundra? Mm-hmm. What is other than their lichen? You know, they like lichen. Yeah. Quiet out here. Yeah. I'll go to that high hill up here to go for out. After one more look through the binoculars, the team heads home for the day, saving their energy for a day when luck is on their side. So what we learned today is the Arctic is bumpy. Lots of ice. <laughs> Lots of ice and it's bumpy. <laughs> the Arctic is unforgiving. It's unforgiving. And it said, hey, you guys from the States, you should go home. <laughs> <laughs> so, Peter, what's the day hold for us tomorrow? Are we going to start? We're going to go due south tomorrow, across the water? Uh, north, northwest. Northwest? Yeah. So there's another big inlet of water over the top of this crest here. Okay. So crest inlet okay. on the other side. Okay. So what time do you think we'll start tomorrow? Nine, nine thirty. Okay. When it starts to warm up. Sure. Yeah. It's pretty cool in the morning. Yeah. So once you have a muskox on the ground, how long does it take you guys to get it quartered, skinned and quartered? Half an hour, four or five minutes. Wow. <laughs> Oh, that's beauty, you got three, you got two, huh? Okay, it won't take long with two people. So, would you hunt a muskox with a bow? No. No? I can't even pull a bow. <laughs> <laughs> the first day of hunting has come to a close. And as the last Arctic light fades, everyone heads to bed, hoping tomorrow will bring new opportunities. It is a new morning and a fresh pot of coffee is brewing. But there is concern at camp. The sky is blue and dark, threatening visibility and travel. It's a little too good for traveling. There's like snow, more visibility. We'll probably spend a few couple hours in camp waiting for the weather to improve. It's funny. My body's a little beat up from the sled. Felt good when I went to bed, woke up stiff. So, I'm sure after a good breakfast and a little stretch, I'll be fine. But it doesn't look so good outside today. Visibility's low, snow and wind blowing. Should be a fun one. After several hours of being stuck indoors, the sun finally begins to show. The sheep shaped team wastes no time in beginning their hunt. They grab their rifle and bow and begin heading out across the Arctic tundra. The team spends the rest of the day braving the cold and keeping a constant eye on the horizon for any signs of muskox. After nearly two full days of an empty landscape, David spots movement in the distance. So about a mile up here, we have a herd of about 25 muskox. It looks like the big bull might be off to the left, so it might be a real easy approach. We'll check out the big herd first, see what we can find in there, then we'll go after the four bulls that are together. So, we'll see what we can do around here. It's a pretty flat country, so there's not very much you can hide behind. Uh, might be okay for a day once you get if the, the males go up into those hills, might be okay for you with the bull. Mm -hmm. But out here, it won't work out very well. With the herd separated and the open ground giving the hunters little to hide behind, the team gets on their snowmobiles in hopes of finding a herd that David can stalk with his bow. We 
got this group of muskox right here. We're checking out. We're trying to see if there's any shooters. There's one that's really odd. He's got a real wide split in the middle, but his horns go way out. It's really cool. Uh, there's a nice one in there, but uh, the one side of the boss, with the horns way bigger than the other side. Uh, there's another young bull in there, but uh, the boss is not finished yet. So uh, we're going to continue and go to the ground for some more herds back, back there. So. While the bull looks promising, it is not mature enough to harvest. The day is fading, and the crew decides to set out on one final search before calling in a day and escaping the Arctic cold. All kinds of muskox around here. A few different herds right here within sight. Just got to see if we can find something. It's big and mature. There's a couple of bulls over there. It's got to get a better view of the boss. The horns, they stand out nice from this distance. I just want to make sure they're not uh, broken. Get a closer look. Go from there. We have a couple of bulls in there. Worth looking at anyways. Peter checks the bulls and gives the go-ahead for a stalk. The herd catches wind of the team moving in on them and begins to take off. Bobby quickly points out the bull he should harvest. Using the rocky terrain to his advantage, David pushes the herd to a cliff. While this leaves David with an open shot, he runs the risk of being charged by over 750 pounds of prehistoric fury. As David makes his final steps, an enraged bull moves forward to defend his herd. The time to shoot is now. Next week on Sheep Shape. Temperatures are dropping as David closes the gap between himself and a herd of muskox. The crew continues to battle the Arctic cold as they experience more weather delays. The hunt is far from over on Sheep Shape.